who's ready for all of the Summerathon recommendations. Hello everyone. So Summerathon is coming up. If you don't know, Summerathon is a readathon that I'm actually taking a part in and actually helping host. Um, my friend Amy from A Quarter Crowns of Quills made this readathon and she asked me to co-host. So I thank her so much. We also have an amazing other co-host as well. Basically, Summerathon is a week-long readathon starting the week of the summer solstice, which here it is June 21st. And the whole goal is to read kind of light and beachy summery reads. You don't have to read those necessarily, but we're kind of thinking because it is that. I also think thrillers are a great time to reread in summer as well. But either way, I thought I'd make a video talking about all of my recommendations for Summerathon. So if you have five challenges, and today I'm going to share with you what those five challenges are and what books I think would be great to pair with those challenges and to read. The books I'll be talking about today are books that I have read and really enjoyed and would I think would be great to pair with that particular challenge in Summerathon. So yeah, I thought this would just be a fun way to kind of introduce you to some books I would recommend for this readathon. I think I'll probably do this again for Tits of Season of Thought as well because I think this is just a great idea for me to help you pick out what you want to read if you want to read it. If you want to know more about the Summerathon, I will link all the information down below. We have a Twitter page, we have an Instagram, I will link all the announcement videos and all of those things. So I hope you join in because I am a huge advocate for light, beachy, cute reads. That is 100% for sure me so let's get into it so the first um challenge is to read a beachy read which if you're looking for that i got you covered i'm gonna try to keep um a mixture of ya and adult because i think that's just fair first one the unhoneymooners i just finished this not too long ago this is the quintessential beachy read i hate to love romance that's set in hawaii swoony steamy beachy if you, you can read this in a day at the beach, at the lake, wherever you are, you can read it in a day. So perfect beachy read. Another one that is a great beachy read is Listen to Your Heart by Casey West. This is not told in summer. It's told during the school year, but it still reads like a beachy read because it's set at a lake. Basically, we have a character that gets involved in a podcast about love, and it's kind of like a You've Got Mail vibe, kind of, in a way, but I enjoyed it. It's Kathy West is known for sugary sweet contemporary books, so that is a great beachy read. So the Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. This is another steamy romance where it's about a girl that kind of, you know, hires a male escort to teach her the ways, and it's just steamy, adorable. Again, you could read this within a day at the beach, like wherever you traverse, wherever you're traveling to. If it's a day where you could just read, you can read that. Another one, any any Taylor Jenkins reads books, I think are great beachy reads, but one in particular is maybe Another Life. I love this one. It's one of my favorites by her. It's Chick Liddy, which I think makes for a good beach read. And this is basically about a woman that has a decision to make. And the book follows both of those decisions, like what her life would be if she made like different decisions, if you will. Just really interesting. So you're reading like about two lives instead of one. I adored it. Great beachy read. The next challenge is to read a book with sunrise colors on the cover. Now I know this is kind of hard because sunrise colors can be a lot. They can be orange and pink and kind of, you know, sunrise colors can be really anything. They have purple sometimes even in that too. Maybe that's sunset. I don't know. Uh, but for me, when I think of sunrise covers, I'm about to pull them out right here. I think of like oranges and kind of light yellows, things like that. Ox approximately, like I think this might be not even a sunrise at all. It's like, looks like it's night, but it looks also like the sunrise. So I mean, it looks like sunrise right there. So that's a perfect one. Also second chance summer. This one, I don't know if it's the sun setting or sun rising. <laughs> I don't know, but either way, it's got sunrise colors on it. You also have Josh and Hazel right here, which again has the pink and it kind of goes to orange, then yellow. So again, if you just, it doesn't have to look like it's a sunrise either. As long as it has these colors on it, that goes. Trust me, my book I'm reading for the readathon, which you don't know quite yet, you will know soon, um, that I picked for this does not look like it's a sunrise at all. It just has the colors on it. So really, it's anything you want. If you think a sunrise is just straight up pink, Pick a pink book, whatever you want to do. We're not going to be here to be like, no. <laughs> Our next challenge is to read a book with a road trip, traveling, or a vacation. So it could be any of those three. It doesn't have to be all of those three. So a lot of times in the summer, people are either on a road trip, they're traveling, they're going on vacation, they're doing something in the summertime. So I have some books I would like to recommend to you for that. The first one being 
Amy Rogers' Epic Detour by Morgan Matson. This is my favorite road trip book of all time. I adore it. It's about two teens that take a road trip together and it's also full of a whole bunch of like playlists that they have. There's actually pictures in this from the exact road trip because Morgan Matson actually took this road trip herself. So I really loved it. I think it's really cute, adorable, a great road trip book for sure. Now if you want traveling, you have Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey Miss Quinson. This book is full of traveling because we have two characters named Alex and Henry. One of them lives in England, one of them lives in the US, so they have to travel back and forth constantly to each other. So one of them goes to England sometimes, one of them goes to Texas, California, DC, things like that. So it's full of traveling. I love this book, would highly recommend it, and I'm sure you've heard a lot about it. It's well worth all the hype believe you me. So there's so many books with vacations in them, honestly. Like, you can pick any one of them. I mean, Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Walsh is not really vacation-y because it's about a character that moves to Italy, but it's kind of like a vacation. You can use it as traveling or vacation, whatever you want to do. I think that's a great one. Also, my Oxford year, I forget who that's by, that has traveling as well because it's about a girl that moves to England to go to school, and it's kind of summery in a way, but I really adored it. I think this one is a little hard to find, but not too much. Also, the Geography of You and Me by Jessica Brody I wrote not too long ago. That's a road trip book right there across the California coast. Highly recommend that as well. You can find a plethora of any of the road trip, travel, or vacation books. Just go on Goodreads. I'm sure you can find a whole bunch of them. Next up, our next challenge is to read a book set in summer. So, first of all, I have a Sarah Dessen book because you know I can't make a summer recommendations video without putting Sarah Dessen on here. She's like one of the queens of summer reads, if I'm honest with you. So this is a long for the ride, and this is about a girl named Auden who is with her dad for the summer and she's up all night. She meets Eli and basically they have like nighttime adventures. So this one's also kind of a vacation book as well. You can combine challenges, do what you want to do. I think that's great. This one's set in summer. One of my favorite summery Sarah Dessen books for sure. Also, if we want to go classic YA books for summertime, The Sisterhood of Traveling Hands by Ann Brasher. It's one of my first series I've ever read when I was younger before I even discovered booktube. I love this series. This follows a whole plethora of girls and it follows their summer as they share these pants together and it's really adorable a really cute wide contemporary series that no one talks about because it's older I mean the cover it looks older but it's just such a good book and I just adore it so much also another book that is set in summer is Summer I Turn Pretty series by Jenny Han this book is about a girl named Belly who goes to her like beach house every summer with her parents she also is there with like she sees her mom's best friend's sons all the time and a relationship happens and I love it it's one of my favorite Jenny Han series. Well, I just like anything Jenny Han writes, but it's mainly set in summer, which is why I'm recommending it to you. And our last challenge that you could really pair a book with is a is a book with food on the cover. Now, this could be food or drink. It could be big. It could be small. Whatever you want to do, it could be food on the cover. So, since you've been gone, these two girls are eating ice cream. Food on the cover. Well, Matt Rishi, she's drinking an iced coffee. Food on the cover. Stay Sweet by Siobhan Vivian. She's got ice cream on the cover because she works at an ice cream stand. Food on the cover. We also have The Proposal by Jasmine Gorini. There's like tacos on this, I think, and there's also like coffee. It, it's just little too. You can barely see it. That has food on the cover. I mean, I could probably pull out more, honestly, if I wanted to. That does not have food on the cover. Just kidding. Maybe I'm like setting myself up for a disaster. Save the date. It's got cake on it. Oh my gosh, there it is. Food on the cover. Grace Moonlight by Jen Bennett. Oh look, they're sharing like a freaking pie or something. Food on the cover. So, I mean, you can pick any book. It doesn't have to be a contemporary book. It could be whatever you want it to be as long as there are food. As long as there's food or a drink on the cover, you're good. Our last challenge is a freebie and that's just to read a summary drink while reading a book and you can pick any book you want with that so I didn't have any recommendations for that because pick any book on your TBR and you are good to go. Those are some of the recommendations I thought I would share with you of what I think would be great reads for Summerathon. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you got something from it and hopefully I helped spark your TBR ideas and things like that. I would love to hear what you're reading for Summerathon because I'm so excited for this readathon. I'm so excited for my TBR which will be coming very very soon. And you guys know I just love summer light beachy reads, so this is the readathon perfect for me. Like I said, I will leave all the links down below for you to check out for all of our hashtags and things like that. You'll be joining in. It's gonna be a fun, chill readathon, which is right up my alley right now. So I'm so excited to do this. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.